Well, hello, everybody. Welcome once again to our city tour of Copenhagen as we start our trip again here uh, in beautiful Scandinavia, beautiful rainy Scandinavia. Yeah, don't go over and wipe off your television set. It's <laughs> us. <laughs> That's right. Uh, sort of like a lot of the days that we had here in the Valley. Anyway, we are continuing with our city tour, and uh, I think that you're going to enjoy this, even though we do have a little bit of rain. So let's listen to our guide, shall we? This square here is called the King's New Square. And this is also a square which has been laid out in 1670. And our king at that time was Christian V. There is a statue of him in the middle of the square. I don't think you can see him because of the trees. But in Copenhagen we have a, an old tradition. In June, when all the children uh, finish school, or rather the graduates finish school, then if they did well, then they come in here and dance around the statue to celebrate that they get, did well at school, and that school is now finished. At the moment, also, the children have a, some of their summer vacation. And in this country, it's between six and seven weeks in the summertime. And I mentioned also earlier that a lot of Danish people, they are on summer holidays at the moment. In Denmark, all the workers have a five weeks paid leave every year. So they get their wages when they are on holiday. And this doesn't depend on how long you've had a job or which company you work for. It is so for all workers. The white building that we will be passing on our right side here now is one of the most fashionable hotels we have in Copenhagen. It's called yeah. Le Dang Le Terre. Well, this building was used as by the Germans during the Second World War in Denmark. The Nazis had their headquarters here. And if you look to the right again, you'll see the other entrance for the pedestrian-only street, which is called Streuet. Most of the shops will be closed this afternoon, though, it being Saturday. The large yellow building with the flags in front of it here on the right, that is a department store, Magazine du Nord. And this yellow building, also on the right, is our Royal Theatre. This building is from 1874. And it houses the very famous Danish uh, ballet. But also you can enjoy opera inside, different types of plays, music as well. The red building on the right here now is the Royal Academy of Art. Also has a lot of art exhibitions. And then I think you'll be able to war. We were occupied by the Germans from 1940 and until 1945. And one of the interesting things is is that uh, none of the uh, Jews in uh, Denmark had to wear the uh, yellow star of David. Hmm. Persecution of the Danish Jews started very badly. Nobody in Denmark at all wore any stars during the Second World War, not the Jews either. Well, Betty, it's, uh, the Germans did occupy Denmark and, of course, a lot of Scandinavia there for, uh, for quite some time. And I think that, uh, you know, we, we do forget that until we are reminded again when we go on a tour like this. The big ship we'll be able to see a little bit, a little better in a minute because we drive around the corner here. But the big ship here is a ferry and it leaves from Copenhagen every afternoon at 5 o'clock. And it leaves for Oslo, the capital of Norway. And it will arrive there in the morning. It's a very beautiful trip. And the ferry here is quite luxurious. Very nice indeed. And then there will also be a ferry leaving from Oslo, also 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and arriving here the next morning. Or if you have enough money, you can take your private yacht like we see right here, and then you could uh, go to Oslo that way if you'd like to. Isn't this beautiful, Betty? I can't imagine anyone spending that kind of, or having that kind of money to purchase a, a 
and that's not a boat. <laughs> that's that, a that, ship. That'd Those be are, a yacht. That's a yacht. <laughs> that yeah. is a yacht. That is it's yeah. it's absolutely beautiful. And think of the crew that they have to yeah. have along with it. That's right. Oh, well, if you can af- you know if you can afford the yacht, you don't have to worry about the price of the, how much it costs to run it. Probably but, not. Yeah. Probably yeah. not. I I'd, I'd like to see though what the original price tag was on this. <laughs> spot where we're standing now this key used to be called the america key because there were many very very large ships that left from here to america and it was also people from uh, it's mainly russia but also the eastern countries of europe they came up here to copenhagen because this was where the last ships left for america and also canada and if some of you have danish ancestors even though we're very fond of you visiting denmark and we do find that Lots of people from America come to Denmark to try and find their own ancestors, maybe find out where they came from, which little city in the countryside could they visit, could they find out something. Then it is not really necessary to go to Copenhagen to do so anymore, because in Denmark we have very, very good old archives. And even though the record office here in Copenhagen are used to helping foreigners trying to seek their ancestors, then that is not necessary anymore because they put the immigration archives on the internet. So now if you have maybe a place or a name, you can sit back home and try and look it all up. Because uh, earlier, well, all up to now, but about uh, almost uh, 300 years back, there have been uh, counting of people here in Denmark uh, some period every fifth year. All the citizens of or all the people in Denmark were counted and they were all written down uh, every single member of each household. So that is really quite easy today. Well, el- anyway, easier than it has been before if you live outside Denmark. Let's walk up to the palace courtyard now. Well, it shows you what modern technology can do. Now you can sit here at home if you have a computer and you're uh, connected with the Internet and you can, if you think that you have ancestors from Denmark, you can just go ahead and look for them in the privacy of your own home. Sure Isn't that nice? Sure, you can, but that's not near as much fun as going and doing it yourself. Oh, of course not. I don't think Peggy Walker would like that. She loves the excuse of going back to Ireland all the time and doing her genealogy. I think a lot of countries that were doing this, you know, they, yeah, are so. putting are putting that on the internet. So it makes it interesting. But, but like actually, you know, if you're gonna if you go, if you plan to take a trip to something like that, you can look that up ahead of time uh, yeah, and I, get a lot of background on it, right? Well, you just stole the words right out of my mouth because I was going to say the same thing that can take care of all your research for you before you go yeah and you verify it <laughs> that's right let's go take a look at some palaces this is the Amalian Ab- Box palace here and this is the winter residence of our Queen Margaret II as I mentioned earlier it was built by four noblemen and it was not really the intention that the royal family should live here at all but when they came to live here temporarily they were very fond of this place and as I said they're still here but it is really not just one palace, it is four palaces. When Queen Margaret, she lives here, she will be living in the palace here behind me. And on each building there is a flagpole. And whenever the flag is up, it means that whom lives in the building is home. But they won't be home today because, as I said, she lives in another palace in the summertime. Over here, this palace, perhaps you can see it's a little lighter in the colors than the other ones. That is because it was renovated only last year and because hardly the Danish people pay towards the renovation of these very beautiful buildings, then the Queen thought that it was a good idea to open it for the public only this summer. So it is open at the moment and we can all enjoy a little of what we spend our money on. In the palace over here behind you, on the first floor there is an apartment, that is where our crown prince lives. And then in the basement of the building, not in the basement, but on the ground floor, there is a museum. And it shows some of the Danish uh, kings, some of the former kings, private rooms, some of their belongings, items. And then in this building over here, this palace is used by our queen mother. Her name was Ingrid, and she also came from Sweden. And she's now in her 80s. The building that we have in the background over there, that is a very large church. And it also has a very large dome. The dome was inspired by St. Peter's in Rome. And it was built at the same time as the four palaces here. All of it is built in the middle of the 18th century. 
and this too is the Rococo style. But this church uh, over there, which is called the Frederick's Church, also has a nickname. It's called the Marble Church because what you see is made of uh, it's made of Norwegian marble, and that was very expensive. So it took many many years to finish it. Really, because before it was finished, the king at the time died, and then there was not enough money to finish the church. So it stood there, well, more or less like a ruin for almost 150 years, until finally there was a Danish uh, financer who put his private money into finishing this church. But in the meanwhile, when it was standing there half finished, there were many of the Danish artists, many of the young painters who dreamt about going to Rome and paint down there, they just came in here and, and it resembled a little some of the old ruins in Rome. Today, uh, the church still functions as a normal parish church for the people who live in this area, and it's a Lutheran church. 85% of the Danish population today belongs to the Lutheran church, and we have a free religion in this country, so you can choose yourself what you want to be a member of or which church. The only person who has to be a member of the Danish church, that is our king, or as we have at the moment, a queen. And as you can see, we have some royal lifeguards here, and they're not just here for the sake of the tourists, but they're actually real trained soldiers. Some of them are drafted, but most of the soldiers that we have in Denmark, they're volunteers. And when you work within the royal lifeguard and guard the palaces here in the Danish Queen, then you work in a 24 hour shift. They are standing out uh, here in the rain for two hours and then inside for four hours, and then again outside. And then the large change of the guards takes place every day at noon. You're allowed to take photographs of them if you like, but they're not allowed to say anything to you, unless you don't behave, of course. Well, I noticed that these guards didn't seem to be as uh, as stiff as the, as, the, as the ones that you see in Britain, you know, at Buckingham so Palace. Proper, yes. So proper. <laughs> But anyway, these, these, these guys looked a little bit more relaxed. You can see with the, kind of the way that they kind of saunder uh, along there. So. But they're volunteers, which I think is marvelous. Yeah. Well, they weren't all, she said. But how great, huh? Mm -hmm. Good opportunity for them also. And these palaces were really, uh, really quite nice. It's nice that the, all members of the royal family each seemed to have their, uh, seemed to have their own. Uh, and it's really quite beautiful. We didn't have time, of course, to uh, at this particular time day to to go in and see the uh, the palace itself but ha perhaps rather on another trip we'll uh, we'll have the we'll opportunity to go ahead I and don't, do it i don't understand all those palaces for crying out loud they're so big why can't they all be in one palace maybe it's a wonderful way you have a bunch of kids and you can put one <laughs> put them in one palace and all your in-laws that you don't want around put them in keep another them in palace, another one huh? right that may be and if you have heard something about that we pay an awful lot in tax, it's true, I can tell you. <laughs> but most Danish people, they pay it, well, I'm not going to say with, with pleasure, but they didn't, they, hardly any Danes at all would like to have lower taxes because what we get in return for our taxes is also a lot. But we pay here between 35 and 65 percent, depending on how much you earn. <laughs> the modern building that we have on the right here is the headquarters of the largest company that we have in Denmark. The company is called Maersk and uh, it's the world's largest private owned shipping agency. They have a lot of container ships but also many other activities, uh, airline systems and also as one of the few companies in Denmark they have uh, the right to extract oil from the Danish subsoil. And in Denmark, we are totally self-sufficient with oil, also natural gas. Now we're down by the waterfront again. The water that we have been seeing so far here is all part of the Copenhagen port. The port goes right into the center of Copenhagen. And across the water, you can see an old crane. It's from 750. And it was used to uh, lift on and off uh, masts, and, and masts and cannons from the old large wooden ships. And next to that there is an old naval battery, the house with the crown on, it's an old naval battery. 
it's called Sixtus. There are some ca cannons over there. You can't see them from here now. But there is also the Danish flag on the flag flagpole. And that is, that particularly, that flag there is the flag of our country, of the kingdom. And that is raised every morning, saluted by cannons. And you have to take it down before sunset in the evening. That's one of the rules about using the Danish flag. The two small grey pavilions here on the right is used by the Queen and her court. Sometimes, very few occasions nowadays, you will receive, uh, receive guests that come from abroad. But some of the other royal families in Europe who have a private royal yacht is uh, the Norwegian couple, King and Queen there. If she receives guests that come from abroad by ship, then she will be waiting in one of the small pavilions, the one with the crown on, and then her court in the other one. Our Queen also has a royal yacht and she sails around visiting different towns in Denmark every summer as well. And this year too, she will be visiting the Faroe Islands and Greenland. Greenland is an old colony of Denmark. Today it's not a colony, but still a part of Denmark though. The largest monument in Copenhagen, it's a very large fountain. The fountain has a name. It's named after a goddess in the Nordic mythology and her name was Gefion. It is spelled G-E-F-I-O-N. We pronounce the G in a different way. And there is a little legend about the goddess Gefion. The legend says that while she was offering her services to the Swedish King Gulfa at that time, now I don't know what services it was, <laughs> it doesn't really say, you see, but I'm sure they must have been good, because then in return she was offered by the king a piece of land. She didn't have any land at all. But she had four sons, and she only had 24 hours to plough a piece of land out of Sweden. Now, being a goddess, she was able to transform her four sons into four oxen. They're the ones that you see on the fountain here. And then they ploughed for 24 hours, and they managed to plough quite a large piece of land out of Sweden. And then the legend says it was stumped next to Sweden, and that is today the island where we're on now. This island is called Sealand, where Copenhagen is. And then in Sweden, if you look at a map today, you'll see that there is a very large lake in Sweden, which has more or less the same shape as uh, this island, uh, Sealand. But I don't think the legend is true, though. <laughs> <laughs> and that is an Anglican church. I told you that King Christian the Ninth had the two daughters, one of them being the Serena and the other one becoming Queen of Britain. And it was on Princess Alexandra's behalf, later Queen of Britain, that this church here was built so that when she visited her family here in Copenhagen, she could also attend services. We have a little British area here. This is the only place in Denmark where we will be driving round <laughs> what we say on the wrong side of the road or the wrong way round the roundabout. <laughs> but the little park here is named the Winston Churchill Park. This is quite a pretty little church, isn't yeah, it, Betty? It's a kind of a big church, not so little, but it is it reminds me of England. Well isn't it? yeah, and I because of the way she explained that, you know, they came from came over from England so they They've should have her own church so that she could worship right there. Yeah. The red building that we're passing on the right side here now, that is the museum of the Danish resistance movement. The Liberty Museum. There's quite a funny looking vehicle standing outside of it, but that was also used during the Second World War. And the his the museum here tells the history about how the Danish people managed during the Second World War. We had a very, very large resistance movement. Many young, especially men, were a part of the resistance movement. The very, the most heroic thing that they did was to help save all the Danish Jews. We had 7,000 Jews in Denmark in the Second World War, and 95% of these Jews were saved. Most of them were shipped across the water, the sound, between Denmark and Sweden. Sweden was a neutral country during the Second World War and they uh, started refugee camps for the Danish Jews. So hardly any of the Danish Jews died because of the war. 
and most of the 7,000 Jews were shipped across the water within a little more than a month and it all happened in the night time not to risk to be caught by the German patrol boats and what we're driving past here on the right now that is today a public park but it used to be an area belonged to the Danish Navy it is Ramparts a part of an old fortification system that was built around the center of Copenhagen in the 17th century many cities in Europe have these type of fortifications built ramparts and moats like this inside the area there are some very old buildings also from the beginning of the 17th century the citadel they're called and they still belong to the Danish military we have the uh, Danish intelligence uh, service in there today but the rest of the area the parks here are used as recreational areas by the people here in Copenhagen in the Middle Ages in medieval times we had a ring wall around the center of Copenhagen but eventually that was torn down as the town increased became larger and then another type of defense system was built and that, that is the type that you see here in the right ramparts and moats and now we are passing on the right the Swedish church in Copenhagen we also have a Norwegian church and a German church as well and I already told you earlier uh, that Norway and Denmark and also the northernmost counties of Germany used to belong to Denmark that is the reason for why we have a Swedish and a Norwegian church here so when you are going to Norway I suspect you will hear a little more of the Danish history and a few of the Danish kings also there because it was a Danish king Christian the fourth who founded Oslo it was earlier called Christiania but now we're on our way down to see well, I suppose one of the most photographed girls in Copenhagen, or maybe even in Denmark altogether, that is the Little Mermaid. And don't be disappointed now when you see her, because she is very little. <laughs> Lots of the foreigners who come to see her, they somehow imagine her to be larger than she really is. But she's also located down by the waterfront, and the figure of her is from 1913. And she too was donated by, by uh, Carl Jacobsen, the former owner of the Carlsberg Breweries. One evening he had been watching a ballet at the Royal Theatre, which we saw earlier on our tour. We drove past the Royal Theatre in Copenhagen. And that ballet was also named The Little Mermaid. And they also played the music with the same name. And he was apparently very enchanted with the prima ballerina dancing in this ballet. So he ordered a Danish sculpture to make a figure in her image. It was, though, the sculptor's own wife who modeled for the figure. And then it was decided that it should be located down here by the waterfront, sort of showing that all people in Denmark live very close to the water. Nobody here in, in this country lives more than about 30 miles away from uh, the coastline. We have a very large coastline because most of Denmark is surrounded by water and our coastline is more than 7,000 kilometers long. We have a very large peninsula called Jutland and then, apart from that, 407 islands. So water has always had a great impact on our country and, uh, and really you could say that the people of Denmark have been living off from the water for many, many years. The story about the Little Mermaid was written by Hans Christian Andersen and it's really a very sad story. It has also been made um, into a cartoon by the Walt Disney Company and then it has a happy ending but the real story doesn't have a, a happy ending. The story about it is that she rescues a human prince from drowning and then she falls very much in love with this prince so much that she wants to give up her life at the bottom of the sea and change it to a life on earth but then she has to change her fishtail into legs and in order to do so she has to go for help to the wicked witch underneath the water and to get legs she has to pay with her very very beautiful voice and then when she has legs and comes on land then she's not a, capable of telling the prince how much she loves him at all and he marries somebody else so she doesn't even have him at all it is quite sad 
She's just down here to the right. We have to walk up the little stairs here. So shall we stop here about 10 minutes? Somebody cut her head off with a saw in the night time. And we still don't know today who did it. I suppose it was just, in, well, one of those so-called happenings in the 60s. But it was never found out who did it. I suppose maybe somebody's got her on her ma on their mantelpiece now somewhere. Well, Betty, I thought that uh, this happened again after the 60s also, that that uh, the head was cut off again. I thought it was just, again, last year, I, I thought I read about it in the newspaper. I don't know how they could get in there and out without, of course, they, it took two days to cut the head off. They they found evidence that they had sawed halfway through and then came back the next oh, night and right? sawed it yeah. again. Yeah, because we would have found them, I think, and maybe, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? I already told you that we have a five weeks paid holiday every year and also in Denmark we have free education, also free universities. It doesn't depend on how much the parents earn for a living. Uh, every young pe uh, person here is capable of going to university if that is if their degree is okay from high school. They have to have proper qualifications. We also have a very good pension scheme for the elderly people here. The usual age uh, to retire in Denmark is when you're 67. But the pensioners uh, here, they get uh, a little more than a thousand US dollars uh, every month. And then also they will get uh, financial support to buy medicine, glasses, other things that they need if they have any handicaps also support paying electricity and heating when you have a job if you lose your job then you get an unemp uh, unemployment benefit and that is a little less than two thousand dollars every month when a woman here has a child if also she has a job then she will have also paid a paid seven month leave from her job and because, uh, as one of the things to try and avoid a high unemployment rate, the government has uh, designed something very special for the young women in Denmark. That is that they can uh, prolong their leave, so they will get 70% of what you get when you're unemployed if they want to stay home and look after their children a, li a little longer than usually. Well, it seems like they do have an awful lot of uh, benefits there, don't they? Sure Betty? they do, but I would rather not pay that high taxes than do my own financial planning. <laughs> the heck with that. 65%? Yeah, that, that can be and pretty And we high. complain. Hey, it's time for us to say so. goodbye. So we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.